data types, variables, input and output, to the lessons includes printf, scanf, variables, assign, equal sign, visual studio setup, let's go. Hey guys and welcome back to C programming the fundamentals with Y code. If you like the video, please give me a like and subscribe. Let's dive in. So today we'll continue talking about inputs and outputs. So last lesson we talked about printing your first line of code. So I'm going just to give you a little reminder. I'm using Microsoft Visual Studios. I will add a link for other IDEs and environments that you can write codes if you prefer. Just a little reminder about printing that we did the last lesson so printf is the code we need to write in order to print we did the example hello world and slash n to go down a line i will run the code now we can see hello world we have a line down and it's good i will show you what happens when we take out slash n so as you can see, I took down the slash n and you can see a yellow line because we did a change. If I will do control S, it says it becomes green. So that's an indication if we're saved the project or not. I will run the code again. We can see hello world without any space or line down. I will add the slash n again. You can see the yellow color. I will save it, it's green. Now if you don't understand, I'm using Control F as a shortcut to run, run the code. You can also go manually, start without debugging, and then it will be the same thing. So now let's dive in into the input part. I'm going to explain a bit and then go straight into the examples. So let's see in our slides. So the input will get a variable x, and then we've got scanf, quotation marks, percentage d, quotation marks, comma x. All of this is the syntax that we need to write. I will show you the example, and I will tell you what's going on. Also in this video, I'm going to explain a bit about the theoretical part, why like motivation, why we need the input output, how the computers connect with the with the program, and uh, we'll talk about it. I'm not sure in this video or the next one, but it's the next subject I want to speak about. So before we go into examples for inputs, we need variables. And to do that, first of all, I'm going to bring you back to the previous lessons that we talked about data types and variables and we'll just show you for a sec so data types we gave some examples integer double char string string and we also got a cheat sheet for data types so we'll use it today in a moment and we talked about variables that it's a name that the computer saves in the memory and we'll give it a value and that's it for now so let's go back and now so we will make an integer we need to write in that's the abbreviation and we'll call it x we can call it number we can call it num we can call it anything i will call it x because i want any line that you finish in C programming, you need to end it to semicolon. So as you can see, we don't have a semicolon. In some languages, more advanced, we don't have to even put a semicolon, but in the C language, we must have it. And you can even see that we have a problem in the red line that we are requested to have a semicolon. So we're going to add it, and then you can see when we save, the red line will disappear. Also, another common thing is that forgetting a semicolon can make your program have lots of difficulties and not work. So please make sure that it works. And if you want to have it, you will run into lots of problems, and most likely your program won't work. 
So now we have our variable x from the integer data type. So we can put the, their whole numbers. We're going to now assign a value to x. We're going to use x equal to 5. I can write here anything I want. That is only if it's whole numbers. I cannot write 0.4. I will leave it at 5 and don't forget a semicolon. So now, just for you to get a better understanding, I will zoom in a bit and I will explain that we got our variable on our left and we assign it a value okay so this is not valid code it's only for you to understand so I'm going to commit it with two dashed lines you can see it's green so it means if I will run my program you won't see anything that I'm writing in the green comments so now as you can see I will just say for a sec we have our real example that x is the variable that I gave it, the name x, and 5 is the value. And after the semicolons, the semicolon x is worth 5. Until I will tell it something else, x is now assigned to be 6. And after the semicolon, so x is 6. And if I will do, if I will say print x here, so we will get that x is 5 and then if I will print x here so I will get that x is 6 so I wrote it in comments also because it's not a valid code now I'm going to explain why I did it in comments because I'm going to explain what is equal in C programming. So equal is a value and then we do a double equal sign and then another value and we'll just go again and comment it so you won't get confused and write it by mistake. So the example here is we know that from school that 2 plus 2 is 4 but when we write code, we need to write it as 2 plus 2 equal equal 4. And only this, and now only the part that I'm marking now, is going to be equal. So now the computer will ask, will ask itself if 2 plus 2 is 4, which we all know that is true. And here, because... 2 plus 2 is not a variable and we're trying to assign a value to a non-variable we will get an error so now let's continue on and let's do our false variable printing so I showed you moments ago that we have our cheat sheet and if we want to print any data type we need to use our cheat sheet as depends on the data type we use so we use integers so integer is percent d so I'm going to delete this text and I'm going to write x is equal to percent d and now it will go and print the integer instead of the percent %d but he, he needs to know which variable to go to so the syntax is a comma and then the variable that we want so x you can see that this part is out of the quotation marks and it means that it will get here the value when we learn later on on printf and how it works, we'll understand much deeper why it works like this. So let's run the code first. And now it's building. We see x is equal to 5. We forgot to put our line down sign. So let's do this line down slash n or enter. And then we'll run it again. 
and as we can say x is equal to 5. Now just understand about the variables we're going to do x is equal to 6 what you think is going to be now stop the video and guess I'm going to run the program okay so x is equal to 6 and you can understand that if I'm going to do x is equal to 5 so we will get again x is equal to 5 so now you printed we printed together all variable and doing that it's a very important basic step to be able to code correctly so now let's do a step further and we're going to ask from the user from the keyboard for a value to the variable so I'm going to delete this part so now after I deleted the content I'm going to start and ask for a value to put in x then I'm going to pr print x so I will still leave the print f quotation marks x is equal to then down x so we will get a result to see what x is because we don't have any value here that we're going to insert to x so now so now before I continue let's go back to the slide I will show you the line that we need to write if you will notice the ampersand is a mistake that I fixed so if you didn't write it beforehand please notice that it need to be before the x so the thing that I'm going to do before I write this kind of I'm going to ask for the user to put in a number so please write a number and then I will go down a line and semicolon that's good for now so now let's write the scanf function and printf and scanf are functions I will talk about that much later on but for now so you can use the word function but you still even if you don't understand it so scanf and then a quotation marks percentage d comma one percent x and semicolon is a thing that you must write as well so now everything looks good we're going to take one sec i got here an autocorrect so a number now i'll save so we're going to print please write a number we'll go down a line then the scanf will take a number from the user and so scanf will take the first thing that the user will press and then enter so if you press enter without anything it will take that it will take anything so we're still not checking that the user is writing the right things but we need to supposedly trust the user that he for now writes the right thing for us after we get the value into x we're going to print the value so now we're going to bump into a problem and it's a very basic thing in visual studios but it's specific in visual studios but i'm going to show you how to solve it and i'm going to show you how to solve it if you don't know i don't have a solution on video so it's going like this so now I'm going to run the program as you, as you can see I've got an, an error so to check what's the problem is we'll go down here to the error list and okay we can see that we have a scanf problem that I know it will happen and this is the number so you can just write this or press on it and it will send you to Google and look for the solution but now I'm going to so show you the two solutions that you can have so number one is writing this sentence the way I'm going to do it now and we're going to do 
hashtag define CRT just copy secure no warnings the line underneath and save and then when we write when we run our code it's supposed to be okay so let's check it out so it's working so please write a number I'll write five and then x is equal to five yay it's worked okay so that's good the other thing that we could have done I will delete it for a sec and then I'm going to run it again and we'll get the problem the same problem so another thing we can do is hashtag pragma warning then I can do disable 496 and this also supposed to fix the problem so let's check x is equal to 3 great so we'll explain a bit about each one of those so this one is disabling the specific problem the reason that we have the problem is visual code the defaults and the updated versions has some defaults that will pop up this warning so we can disable it specifically or we can disable it warnings one sec, we'll pay capital S. So we can disable it for more other warnings that we will find in the way, or specifically here. For the beginners, I recommend doing this one because you will get less problems. After you get a bit more, after you get better in the coding and everything here in Visual Studios, so please, you can delete this part so i'm going to use the crt secure no warnings so let's check the code that the code is working it's going on let's check let's see okay so it needs to be before the include okay so let's try again so it's working now. Okay, so that's it for the CLT secure no warnings. And from now on, I'm going to write it in every project I'm going to make. So that's all for now. Let's recap. We printed, we printed a variable, we assigned a variable with a value. We talked about assigning an equal the signs that uh, assigning is one equal sign and equal is two equal signs we talked about the function scanf and that we need to write it in this way we, we will use the percentage sign for integers uh, with d and for other data types we'll use different letters but percentage sign will stay and we we printed to the screen we took from the user information and we point it back to the screen so that's a pretty big pros progress for now so next lesson will be a few exercises and hope you enjoyed please give me a like and subscribe if you like the video thank you very much and see you next time